Two years after taking over Afghanistan, the Taliban are now in charge of their first big project, the Kosh Tepa Canal. But why are they building Asia's biggest man-made river in the desert? The answer is that it will be pumping about 25% of the water from the Amu Darya into Afghanistan. This water will be used to water 550,000 hectares of land in three provinces, Balkh, Jiaoxian, and Faryab. This will help Afghanistan's farming industry, which will bring the country closer to being able to grow its own food. Thousands of people are working on the Kosh Tepa Canal in different shifts, and officials in Afghanistan have already said that the first part of the canal is finished. One of Afghanistan's major rivers, the Amu Darya, which is also called the Amu River, flows through the northern part of the country. It starts in the Pamir Mountains in Afghanistan and goes through Turkmenistan, Uzbekistan and Tajikistan before ending in Afghanistan. To get to the Aral Sea, it runs for 25-40 kilometers, about half the width of the United States. In the area, it is very important to make sure that farming is successful. This is especially important for Tajikistan, Kyrgyzstan, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, which depend on more than 80% of global water supplies. But Afghanistan, the place where the Amu River starts, has never really used its water supplies in a modern way. As a result, they are constructing the Kosh Tepa Canal in the Amu River Basin, which Sardar Muhammad Dawood Khan, the late president of Afghanistan, originally planned. This gives the country a chance to use its water resources in a more advanced and mechanized way to help agriculture grow. The Kosh Tepa Canal feasibility study was finished in 2018, while Ashraf Ghani was president. The canal should start in the Kaldar district of Balkh province and end in the Ankoy district of Faryab province as planned. When the government changed in Afghanistan in August 2021, they said they would start building canals in March 2022. This is one of Afghanistan's most important building projects. The canal will be 285 kilometers long and 100 meters wide. The work should be done by 2028. This canal project is more than just a way for the new Taliban government to get water. This canal will bring about 25% of the water from the Amu River into Afghanistan and water 550,000 hectares of land in three Afghan areas. It will be a test of how well they can run the country. Around 4,000 people are working non-stop with tractors and heavy-duty trucks to dig a huge ditch 100 meters wide, which is wider than the California aqueduct. They do this day and night. For the people of Afghanistan, especially the towns in Jiaoxian province, this canal is a sign of hope. The people here are having a harder time getting food. There have been four decades of constant war, three seasons of terrible drought, and changes in the climate that have messed up the way it rains. In the last 70 years, Afghanistan's normal temperature has gone up by 1.8 degrees Celsius, which is twice the average for the whole world. When the canal is finished, Afghanistan might be able to grow its own food for the first time since the 1980s. It is thought that this huge project will cost 60 billion Afghanis, which is about 700 million US dollars. In terms of Afghanistan's business and social well-being, it is very important. 60,000 families in three provinces, Balkh, Jiaoxian and Faryab, will be better off because it will create jobs in agriculture. In addition, this project will help make Afghanistan safer and more stable. It helps a lot of farmers who are frail and vulnerable to severe harm from sudden changes in the weather that cause them to lose money. They could turn to illegal actions as an extra way to make money. On the other hand, Afghanistan's Central Asian rivals, especially Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan, are worried about the start of building a canal on the Amu River. The canal will send about 25% of the water from the Amu River to Afghanistan. 
This water source is very important for Uzbekistan's agriculture, especially its cotton farms, which provide a lot of jobs. In response to this issue, Abdulaziz Kamilov led a high-level Uzbek delegation that recently visited Afghanistan and met with local government representatives. The specifics of what was talked about at the meeting in terms of the canal have not been made public. Experts think that managing water was probably one of the main things that were talked about. The goal of this canal is to take 10 billion cubic meters of water out of the Amu River every year. More than 100 kilometers of it have already been dug. Every day it becomes clearer what kind of effects this project might have. The Taliban are putting a lot of money and time into this project, which has more than 4,000 people and many machines. They seem set on finishing the canal, no matter what might happen to states further downstream, like Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan. It's important to protect the water distribution deals that are already in place in the area. If there are disagreements, it could cause a diplomatic crisis that would isolate the Taliban even more and make security in the area even worse. That's why the Uzbek delegation stressed the need to build the canal while following current legal standards. However, fitting such a huge project into the current legal framework brings up many questions. In the past, the Soviet Union and the Afghan government came to an understanding about the Amu River in 1946. These deals did not, however, talk about sharing water on the Amu River. Later, deals like the post-Soviet Almaty Agreement did not include Afghanistan as a signatory. This gave the Central Asian states a lot of freedom to develop the basin's water resources. It led to the building of the huge Karakum Canal, which brings most of Turkmenistan's water. It also sped up irrigation projects near the river's mouth, which cut down on the amount of water that went into the Aral Sea. The Almaty deal, which is based on Protocol 566 from the Soviet era, controls the basin right now. It assumes that Afghanistan will divert only 2.1 billion cubic meters of water, which is a lot less than the 10 billion cubic meters that the Kosh Tepa Canal could take. The project to build the Kosh Tepa Canal, which will divert water from the Amu River, is having big problems and could have bad results. Uzbekistan is worried about how this will affect its cotton business and how the drying out of the Aral Sea will cause problems with health and the environment. Turkmenistan also depends on the Amu River a lot, but they are having trouble getting enough water. The governments of the region have been working with the Taliban to fight terrorism, but the construction of the canal could make this work less smoothly. Also, the construction of the canal could lead to settlements by groups with ties to the terrorists, which could make the area closest to the borders of Central Asian nations even less stable. Central Asian countries in the Amu River Basin were in a tough spot because of the Kosh Tepa Canal. They have to decide between possible instability in the region and instability within their own country. They have to weigh the pros and cons of having a happy and stable Taliban in northern Afghanistan against the costs their own people might have to pay if the Amu River's water supplies are further restricted. While Uzbekistan's current position and Turkmenistan's lack of a clear position may show that they have different objectives, harmony in the area versus internal stability, due to how quickly the project is moving forward, Uzbekistan and Turkmenistan may not have had time to fully prepare their diplomatic replies. What do you think about this project? Do you think it will change the future of Afghanistan and its people, or do you think it will make things less stable in the area? Please subscribe to our channel and don't forget to hit the like button.